Oh, it's good to be home. Get to see my favorite furry friend, the dog, Wolf. And we have some new furry friends as well. Wolf, boop, boop, I'm a dog. First on my agenda of very, very important things, I'm gonna take my tractor right here. I'm gonna go get my John Deere 310 disc. Let's get her cranking. I can't get over how easy this thing starts. Disc has been hooked up. Now that that long journey is over, let's shut her down real quick and get some of our maintenance done. Never fails. Never have enough hose. I'm about three feet away from being able to reach the tire. Until the hydraulic fitting for the cylinder comes in tomorrow morning, our disking act activities are halted. One giant looking at another. Something just randomly bit me and decided I needed to respace the uh, shanks on my chisel plow here. I'm going to 17 and an eighth inch centers. So I got that one moved get the other set six actually moved i cannot believe that none of these broke dad just got back here from pulling fence at an unruly uh, tenant's place and he just shook his head at me and what i'm doing the chisel shank respacing project is on hold for now i got all of them respaced and where they need to be now i just need to tighten everything down and That'll be done. And now I'm gonna be working on my planter here, getting it ready for maybe tomorrow. These are our 10 new feathered friends here on Goldinger Farms. Ladies, does this make me a livestock man now? So I'm using Kinsey bean meters on my planter. I'm gonna be planting like 135 to 150 ish. Now I only say ish because I really don't know how to, this planter works. And part of tomorrow is gonna be learning how it works. So it's not just completely because I wanna go play around with my new planter. But I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a big reason why I'm gonna go plant tomorrow. There's one on. And I need to go plant to uh, show my neighbors that I'm the biggest farmer in the area because I was in the field on March uh, 6th. As you know, it's all about beating your neighbors and uh, being first in the field. At least it is in, no in my part of Northeast Missouri. I don't know about yours. This one uh, contact we drive wheel actually aired up pretty well. It doesn't appear to be leaking yet, but we'll give it overnight and see what it actually does. All six of my seed boxes are on and I need to, I really need to do something with all my stuff back here because this is in the corner of uh, dad and grandpa's shop. And truth be told, I don't know if they like my stuff being in here that much. Hmm, this isn't a John Deere quad track. <laughs> That's not Mark Goldinger. And that is not a planter. All of these things are because I'm actually with my friend Zach here. He is ripping ground here in a river bottom. Uh, his family spread uh, manure over this ground, so they're trying to get it worked in and incorporated with this case uh, disc ripper. And he's using a versatile, how many horses is it? 610. 610 Delta Track. And I was curious how these things rode because I'm a John Deere 9RX kind of guy. I've never been in one, and actually, I'm pretty impressed, I gotta say. All right, Zach, I got some questions for you. I know that you guys ran a 540 quad track last year, or was it this spring? Uh, I ran it last spring. Uh, last spring. And I, now you guys have this versatile Delta track. So what do you like about this tractor over the quad track or vice versa? Well, uh, going down the road, I definitely think versatile's track system um, outdoes the case. Um, in field, I'd say they pretty evenly match. Um, obviously, I have 70 more horsepower than I had in the case, and we're pulling a disc ripper, it only pulled a 30 foot disc with the case. Um, technology definitely is better than the case side, uh, but the ag leader system I have for this does a great job. And versatile is cheap horsepower, and it definitely gets the job done for everything I need to do. Lighting, uh, I got full LED lights with this. Uh, it's definitely an option, I believe, on the quad tracks. Uh, the one I ran had HID lights, and uh, when it got dark, you might as well went home. Flashlight farming, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so how come you're ripping like this? There's some people out there that would say that this is a complete and total waste of time. 
Well, uh, we spread 22 and a half ton per acre of dairy manure on this field. We're incorporating it so we don't get the seed burn and so we can speed up the breakdown and the release of nutrients. As well as this is a really wet bottom field, even though it has been completely pattern tiled. So we're trying to get some surface drainage and prevent sealed spots in the field. Mega thanks to Zach for the uh, free kind of demo. <laughs> Zach was kind enough to let me drive this thing and it drives about like our John Deere except the uh, shifter here is a little different and you've got a parking brake and a hydraulic lock on this thing but that's just because it's Canadian and they're weird. Let's see what it'll do. Now that I'm out here outside the cab, I can really smell the uh, special effects that the uh, cattle manure has on your nose and the ground. He's like, what'd you like to do? These are our five new furry friends that I was talking about earlier in the video. I got all my shanks repositioned and tightened down. Now I'm gonna start this tractor up because I might take it behind the shop and run a pass or two just for fun. But I really need to get this thing moved out of the middle of the barnyard, which is where it is right now. I think it's working down pretty nice now. That's enough of that for now. Dad needs my help. He needs me to get the red truck over to where my sisters are getting a new chicken coop from. And we're going to try and load it on the trailer and get it back home here before I need to leave. Nothing to it but to do it. It might be a little bit over their legal width. Nothing to see here, DOT. Totally not hauling a chicken coop across the road with uh, no straps or anything. We made it to the house. Lame. My great grandma uh, from Illinois wanted to know if I could help trim some trees. So of course I said yes. And this is my great grandma and grandpa's farm here by uh, Paloma. They bought this 80 acres for $12,000 in 1950 something. And I was over here a lot growing up and I really miss miss having grandpa around and I miss being here with him. My grandpa actually gave me uh, the number five sickle mower that I have before he passed away. And the last words I said to him was about the sickle mower. So that sickle mower, not for sale. The, this tractor behind me is another special machine. This was my great grandpa Dittmer's big tractor for many, many years. It's a John Deere 4520. Oh, I take that back. It wasn't his big tractor. It's his second biggest. And it's a John Deere 4520. This tractor also has a loader, which is a big loader. If you can tear this thing up, you, you have talent. I'm not sure how many hours this has on it, but that's original paint and it is, it's perfect. No paint ever. Grandpa put these lights here on the front for working at night. It's got dual hubs on it, really good rubber. Allegedly, the uh, tr the clutch is kind of questionable, but yeah, it's whatever. This tractor has a side console. That tells me it's either a 71 or a 72. Synchro range transmission and an MNW exhaust temperature kit. So that's cool. Could somebody tell me what's missing from this picture? Take a look at this combine and then look at this one. There's something critical missing here. That's right, if you guessed the badge is missing you'd be correct this is a travesty everybody knows that if you're not going to look cool doing something don't even bother doing it we got to get that fixed right away even though we're not going to use this for nine months that essential that that gets fixed things are about to get very staggery ah oh, it smells like anhydrous ammonia gotta love it this is gonna be my sweet ride for a while this is my Cousin Willie's 9350, and it is for sale. It's got Tiger Duels and running as Sulphur 1100. And I'm supposed to work 85 acres over there and about the same here across the road. Oh, yeah. This is gonna be fun. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, it, 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 it runs okay. Well, I've run this over about 15 acres and I can honestly say this is kind of fun. 
except the air conditioning does not work and that is not fun and there's some ditches in here and the suspension in these not a 9570 rx by any means so i had to turn the air conditioner on which means shirt comes off and good cousin will here uh says wait a minute i didn't put any freon in it oops oh well it's not that bad and really the snow auto steer thing it, i mean it, it's manageable just got to be prepared and be ready nice one yeah all right yeah honestly this whole stiker thing is actually kind of nice it took a little bit of getting used to but after about a half hour i had it down and mastered but uh the auto steer i kind of missed that it just makes things makes things easier and you have less things to watch and you can focus on what the implement's doing i decided to quit stigering for today and now i'm racing home well doing the speed limit home and I'm gonna take a shower and then go praise the Lord and then break the law. That's not a literal statement. That's a reference to an ASAP Rocky song. Pretty good, it's called The Shine. And I did get the hydraulic fitting there in the back seat for my disc. So I may be able to work down what I want to plant tonight yet. Hello, aptly named Gray Cat. I got this wild idea that I needed to come run my tractor for 15 more minutes and chisel up the rest of the ground that I'm gonna plant tomorrow. Now this is big time farming. Extremely big time. I think that's enough uh, 7.30 diesel fun for tonight. 7.30 on a Sunday morning, and here I am getting ready to plant beans. Well, first I have to work down my ground, but that shouldn't take too long. I got my field cultivator hooked up, chisel is put away, and now I'm gonna head back to the house. Hydraulic fitting in place. That's $20 right there. And this is what it looks like after it's been disc five times when it wasn't really dry enough. And unfortunately in third gear, I think some of the teeth on the bull gear are broken because every once in a while it'll pop or not skipping a gear, but skipping a tooth because it's just not there. So when I split this tractor to take care of the uh, rear main seal, that's leaking transmission fluid in the hydraulics, I will fix that as well. I'm serious, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna plant beans, not joking. I'm serious, don't test me. Now I gotta flip my rose on so it'll actually plant when I set it down. Three, four, five, and six. I'm doing it. We'll just see if they come up or not. I was planting along and my monitor was saying that I wasn't planting. I was like, hmm, that's weird. So I hopped off, went and dug around. There's no seed. The reason for that is we put these clutches on backwards. Important note, RH goes on the right hand side, which would be this side. LH goes on the left hand side. It's working. You see now things are actually turning. So yeah. Except that one wheel is not on the ground all the time. Running good too. The real question is, is there seed? Yeah, there's something right there. to adjust my population a little bit. After four hours of playing around with this, I think I've had enough uh, old tractor action for a while. I mean, four hours on something like this is like a lifetime because this is probably the most it's been ran for many, many years. This is what happens when you let women name cats, specifically my little sister. Dad's gonna start working on our spring stuff and we even got our, some of our seed in. 
Allegedly, tomorrow we're gonna start putting on anhydrous ammonia. Is that right, Dad? Allegedly, he says. Dad also bought this really cool tree shear to go with his grapple and his dirt bucket and things for our skid steer. If you're a Goldinger Farm super fan and you know what happened here a year ago, I applaud you for sticking with me for that long. If like this point in time last year, I had like 25 subscribers. You gotta start somewhere, I guess. Oh, and Mimi's Coffee House by the hospital in Hannibal rocks. I left my landlord uh, one, two, three, four, like six rows of corn here at the edge of the field. And this is what happened to it over the winter with the deer and the other assorted wildlife. So these are our five little kittens that uh, were birthed by our cat Pippa, or as I like to call her, Socks, hence her white feet. But we've got, we think two boys and three girls. We've got two of them that look like dairy cows, this one and this one. And then there's, there's two or three of them that look like her that have stripes. And we got one laying over here. Oh, they're so cute. Anyway. Goodbye, puppy. See you next week. A couple of things while they're on my mind. One, we made 2,000 subscribers today at approximately 10 in the morning, so there's that. Big thanks to everyone who watches, and if you're not a subscriber yet, you should be. You're missing out, I'm telling you. And so these beans that I planted, are they gonna survive? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I planted them like an inch and a quarter deep. I'm hoping that it stays cool enough this week that the beans don't come up and they can get a hold of the warm weather that's supposed to be here next week. Not, today is Sunday, so not like this week, but the next week. I think I'm gonna plant my beans for real, like my 54 acres of beans. I'm gonna start doing that in like mid-May. So thanks for watching and come back next time and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Horseman.